Hello church family, it's Daniel Sadler and I am going to be reading Luke 17. One day Jesus said to his disciples, there will always be temptations to sin, but what sorrow awaits the person who does the tempting? It would be better to be thrown into the sea with a millstone hung around your neck than to cause one of these little ones to fall into sin. So watch yourselves. If another believer sins, rebuke that person. Then if there is repentance, forgive. Even if that person wrongs you seven times a day and each time turns again and asks for forgiveness, you must forgive. The apostle said to the Lord, show us how to increase our faith. The Lord said, if you had faith even as small as a mustard seed, you could say to the mulberry tree, May you be uprooted and thrown into the sea, and it would obey you. When a servant comes in from plowing or taking care of sheep, does his master say, Come in and eat with me? No. He says, Prepare my meal. Put on your apron and serve me while I eat. Then you can eat later. And does, and does the master thank the servant for doing what he was told to do? Of course not. In the same way, when you obey me, you should say, We are unworthy servants who have simply done our duty. Verse 11. As Jesus continued on toward Jerusalem, he reached the border between Galilee and Samaria. As he entered a village there, ten lepers stood at a distance, crying out, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. He looked at them and said, Go, show yourselves to the priests. As they went, they were cleansed of their leprosy. One of them, when he saw that he was healed, came back to Jesus, shouting, Praise God! He fell on the ground at Jesus' feet, thanking him for what he had done. This man was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, Didn't I heal ten men? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give glory to God except for this foreigner? And Jesus said to the man, Stand up and go. Your faith has healed you. Verse 20. One day the Pharisees asked Jesus, When will the kingdom of God come? Jesus replied, The kingdom of God can't be detected by visible signs. You won't be able to say, Here it is, or it's over there. For the kingdom of God is already among you. Then he said to his disciples, The time is coming when you will long to see the day when the Son of Man returns, but you won't see it. People will tell you, Look, there is the Son of Man, or here he is. But don't go out and follow them. For as the lightning flashes and lights up the sky from one end to the other, so it will be on the day when the Son of Man comes. But first the Son of Man must suffer terribly and be rejected by his generation. When the Son of Man returns, it will be like it was on Noah's day. In those days, the people enjoyed banquets and parties and weddings right up to the time Noah entered his ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. And the world will be as it was in the days of Lot. People went about their daily business, eating and drinking, buying and selling, farming and building. Until the morning Lot, Lot left Sodom, the fire and burning sulfur ran down the heaven and destroyed them all. Yes, it was, it will be, business as usual right up to the day when the Son of Man is revealed. On that day, a person out on the deck of a, of a roof must not go down into the house to pack. A person out in the field must not return home. Remember what, ha what happened to Lot's wife? If you cling to your life, you will lose it. And if you let your life go, you will be saved. That night, two people will be asleep in one bed. One will be taken, the other left. Two women will be grinding flour together at the mill. One will be taken, the other left. Where will this happen, Lord? The disciples asked. Jesus replied, Just as the gathering of vultures shows 
for the carcass nearby, so these signs indicate that the end is near. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for this wonderful time that celebrates your birth. Hopefully, everyone shall have a wonderful Christmas and, and praise your name. Amen.